All right, so it's nearly six o'clock on uh, Thursday, June 20th, and I'm going to call to order our regularly scheduled meeting of the select board. Uh, first item is to approve uh, minutes from last time, which was June the 6th. Could I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Great. And um, so I had made one last minute request to Amanda, right? Yes. Yes. About your doesn't show up, but mine does. Um. So she's got it in the written minutes, um, but the change that I asked for was in on page three, second half of the page. There's a longish paragraph that starts with Aaron spoke to the select board. Mm -hmm. At the end of that is where Aaron was reporting, like, you know, this is what it, so he recommends getting the hybrid model. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to add a sentence that said the select board generally agreed with his recommendation. So I mean, to add that to the copy she's okay. got, because I think okay. we did. We didn't vote on it, but we said yes. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, we did. So just to have that in the record. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the select board. Did. So anyway, that was. So that's in in the minutes as written that Amanda has. Okay. Any other changes, comments, questions? No. Nicely done on the minutes. Uh, so all in favor of, um, of approving the minutes as written with that change, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That was everyone. Um, next is set adjust agenda. Do we have any changes? Does anybody have anything? Good. We'll roll with the agenda we've got. Communication from the audience. Everybody's here for a reason, I think. Um, but it's nice to have an audience. <laughs> Doesn't always happen. Uh, first, uh, town manager report. Sean to update us on what's happening on his end of the Absolutely. town. So um, have uh, did some coordination uh, with the public works crew on the pressure washing of the Mill Street wall. That and, was really uh, nice. The mural was installed basically, uh, it was like that afternoon actually. I think it was, I want to say two Fridays ago. But I think that looks really nice is my observation. So it came out looking pretty sharp. You guys seen it? Briefly driving by. Yeah, yeah it looks yeah. nice. Yeah, so um, that, I think it looks really nice on that in the town and I appreciate the public works crew adding that to their work list. Um, did, uh, as is a monthly task, processed our electronic end of month uh, wastewater discharge report uh, in cooperation with Ken Lacasse. He, uh, he does the basics on that and then I do a review. So that's a required uh, reporting element that we do for uh, Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation for our wastewater discharge. Um, we have uh, distributed or posted, if you will, the LVRT grant, the design bid for what we, we are calling section four and five. Uh, that is uh, the grant we are going after with USDA. And that is the area that would be uh, from North Main Street through the Creamery area back to Maple and the Slap Hill location, uh, referred to uh, ongoing as the Creamery project. So the design bid is out on that. Um, I have a typo in my report. I apologize. Bids are due the end of June. And uh, from memory, I want to say the 26th. So my apologies. I dumped that sentence. And then what we're doing is uh, the selected bidder would have design uh, elements due by July 31st. Uh, I'll comment on a related item a little bit further down in the report. Any questions on the LVRT design bids? So design, I thought um, Doug Weber was, had done the design on that. Um, did I get these mixed up? I just combined Creamery with the other. I uh, stand corrected. Uh, project four and five are not under um, Summit Engineering. Creamery is, so I said yeah. that inaccurately. Okay. My apologies. We are, for section four and five, we are at that phase where we would go out for our contractor to select the designers. The design, right. Yeah, sorry, thank and you. And that's the section me. heading to, towards East Hardwick. That's correct. Yeah. Sorry, I mixed that up. 
our uh, phone contractor was on site. Everybody recalls we reported we were having some trouble with our phone system. We did troubleshoot the system and uh, has been reset. And uh, I want to say thanks to Amanda. She helped lead up that effort to get it uh, back up and uh, to a uh, workable condition. So appreciate that. Did uh, collaborate with uh, Chief Cochran on a police department officer interview. Uh, that went well. I think he may have an update on that, uh, if not this week and in the very near future. Um, I am continuing to work with the neighbors uh, to the Judah Vine Library um, property and the land merger process that will be uh, going on there. And that has involved collaboration with the town attorney uh, for, uh, if everybody here is aware, we have the senior center and the library property. The objective is that we join those two properties. So that's continuing. Uh, hopefully quick claim deed information is in order here in July. Just, it takes time on these things. I think everybody knows that. I wish it'd go faster, but it's just what it is. Did walk the LVRT. This is about the Green Rear Project now with uh, Deb, Doug Weber from Summit Engineering. And they're at a point where they're uh, trying to get the final design um, documents in order. And as a part of the field inspection, this was last Wednesday, uh, Wiz happened to be at the Historical Society. And one of the issues that came up is uh, up to that point, uh, anybody who had been looking at the LVRT project was of the mind that the trail, the tracks that are left would be coming out. It was just an automatic assumption at this phase, the tracks would be coming out, the remaining, and we'd be going with the rec path. So. We've had some ongoing discussions uh, with, Wiz has led the effort with the Historical Society to have some folks from the Historical Society weigh in on this. Um, we've had some communications meeting the town with VTRANS, Summit Engineering, State Historical Preservation Office, and our, our USDA uh, grant contact. Where it's at right now is we're trying to coordinate on a site visit with the VTRANS Historical Society uh, representative, excuse me, his, um, said that wrong, the State Historic Preservation contact with VTRANS uh, to do a site visit just to evaluate what the options might be at this phase. So, I mean, that's it in a nutshell. I don't know if you want to add anything else on that. That's kind well, of where we're the at. Tracks, the, the, the policy is that if tracks have been abandoned in order to make the rail trail, they take them up, which makes perfect sense. But those tracks were not abandoned. They were put there specifically to show the relationship of the depot to the rail that went past. And um, or they were left there specifically. They were left there, right. The, yeah. the, and they and took up all the others. It, it was the work of the town's representative in Montpelier working with VTRANS that those tracks were left there. And so we are just asking that they think of other ways to do it other than taking up those tracks and just going down the right away. I mean, I understand how it works in lots of other places, but in this case, those tracks serve a specific purpose, and I've had a lot of school kids and anybody born after the 1960 look at them and say, oh, wow. That's why this is a deep Et cetera. <laughs> and there's a chance that it Part might be possible to move those historic. trails, the, ra the tracks closer to the there are all Depot. kinds of things we've been yeah. talking about. It was maybe move them closer to the building, mm -hmm. maybe put a side, turn the rail trail into a side track around, not literally a track, but follow a path mm -hmm. sort of like a side track mm -hmm. would have. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There used to be a side track there. There isn't anymore, and we, when we talk about this, we really don't talk about it because side tracks are not, other than just us part of language, are not really part of our working understanding anymore. But if the rail trail were created as sort of a side track, it would bring back a whole other level of understanding of how the railroads worked in this area. Anyway, so there are it's options. a conversation. There are lots of options. Yeah, I think it's going to be, my observation is this, um, it, it might be a prickly issue to navigate, I guess is what I would say, mm -hmm. just because, uh, you know, what the assumptions have been to this point. But uh, again, I, I think what I would repeat is that the VTRANS Historic Preservation Contact was, uh, you know, she's already volunteered to come out and have a look and, you know, we get to see what we have for options at this point, so. Why I say it's prickly is from VTRANS perspective, they really are on this thought process of, 
we didn't think we were leaving that behind. So that's just the perspective from that entity. Which is interesting because I looked at that and I'm like, wow, that's like the only section of rail yeah. that I know of that exists on this whole railroad. They right. must have left it on purpose. Yeah, they did. They did. did. <laughs> so, so we're, they, uh, they you know, did. we're. I think what's good is that um, I, I guess the way I, I said this to a couple of different folks here recently is I'm glad we're talking about it now and not yeah. after. Yes. yes. So yes. Uh, you know, we got the conversation going. Right. And there ought to be a way to keep the preserve the historical element mm -hmm. and also run a trail. Okay, so um, if there's nothing else on that, um, did take part, Eric was in on this, a couple of representatives involved with the Yellow Barn uh, Business Accelerator program um, last, was it Thursday, Eric, or Thursday, right? I've lost track yeah, of my days so. here. Last Thursday, we were in Montpelier to present yeah. to the uh, Agency of Commerce Community, that Agency of Commerce and Community Development, we presented to the Vermont Community Development Board and this was for consideration of a $1 million grant application to support this project, obviously very significant. Uh, my observation is that the presentation was received well, but it's, uh, they have pretty good poker faces because they have other people that are you know, going after grants. So what we know at this phase, uh, you know, we had a little bit of time to answer questions. We felt like we answered those well. We should have a decision on this. Uh, July 5th is what we, has been relayed to us. So uh, that's where that's at. I uh, did do a shotgun ride with Chief Cochran for uh, checking on a couple of locations for some temporary uh, speed monitoring, sign lo uh, monitoring unit locations uh, up in East Hardwick. So um, public works crew assisted with setting some uh, posts so that we'll be doing that in the near future. And in addition, we have set a 25 minute, uh, 25 mile per hour, excuse me, speed limit sign on South Main. Uh, we had some feedback and we kind of looked at this that once you go past the blinking light, the next speed limit sign you hit is the 40 speed limit sign out closer to Buffalo Street. And we looked at it and we were, uh, it came to an agreement that, you know, it'd be reasonable to have a 25 mile an hour sign here just at the Y of Jenny Road. So that has been placed. So I appreciate uh, the chief giving me some feedback on that and the public works crew, Tom helping out and uh, you know figuring out where we could make an improvement there for uh, posting of the sign. Um, we did a review of the Vermont SRF step three financing application for the Bridgman Reservoir Roof Project. I didn't put that detail in the uh, my notes, but that's what that's all about. So you're gonna, the, the select board has received the application via email prior, that's the 13 page item. That is to uh, uh, basically uh, do our sign-offs. The board would approve of, yes, we want the Vermont SRF DEC money to do this project. We have bonded as a community for 420,000. That's just codifying that and keeping us in the queue with the Vermont DEC group that would finance this. And we have that. We have capital set four. aside. Sorry, go ahead, Eric. We have that as item number four in our agenda. That's correct. Yeah. So that's what that's all about. Uh, did a program planning meeting with Carol Plant and Lee King with uh, Hardwick Area Restorative Justice Center. Uh, their program uh, amendments or updates or work plans, if you will, uh, get uh, drafted and signed off and renewed every year. So we're going to be working on getting those in place in the next couple of weeks. I did complete a response item to VLCT. They were out in late spring to do a property and casualty insurance fund check. It's basically a preventative walkthrough to uh, check on the town's properties as well as the work environment. And there's a handful of things that were suggested for us to improve and I'm working with the various departments to get those taken care of. Some are already taken care of. And it is for uh, preventive maintenance to uh, better protect the assets and just as important to make sure we're looking out for worker safety. So that's been, uh, those things are taken care of. We did receive the historic depot paint bids and those were due uh, this week. We've got a couple that came in, and the Historical Society, I have that right, right, Wes? Made the, the uh, it's board, right? Or is it trustees? It's the trustees. The trustees will be making a determination on the uh, contractor um, for we'll that be process. We'll making a recommendation. Okay, thank you. It's a town building. Yeah. So we'll wait to hear back um, okay. on that to make our next steps on that. And then uh, just the Yellow Barn Business Accelerator again, uh, you know, continuing to uh, work with the planning group there to uh, keep going on our design here, the uh, make sure we're on target with our permitting, continue to uh, make sure that the potential funding sources are, um, you know, we're, we're reaching out to the right people about that, those processes and uh, 
you know, that's there's a lot happening there as well. I got two other items that I didn't put on my report, but I want to just make sure uh, are here for the select board. We have set our contract. Our contracts are in place for our FY20 operating season uh, heating, oil, and diesel fuel. We have locked in our prices and we have set our contracts. Um, those two items we will be using Dead River. The uh, good thing to note here is that the prices actually have gone down as compared with this current operating cycle, so that's going to help us out on the budget next year. Hmm. This current operating year on heating oil, as an example, the price was 253 and we've locked in at 221. Uh, for diesel, last this current year's price is 270, and we've locked in at 238. And our propane uh, contractor, we do split these up. Uh, will be Irving, and that uh, current operating year up through June 30, the price is 156, and we're going to be locked in at 126. So there's there's some decent savings that is going to be obtained, uh, you know, with these contracts being set. So. The last thing I would like to do is just put a shout out to uh, Kristen Leahy's family and wish Sean a uh, speedy recovery. I understand he's doing well and making very good progress, so I think it's important that he be recognized and just a shout out to him and his family. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's all I have. I have um, a couple follow-ups. One is uh, the historic, the depot paint bids, it says are due 619 yesterday mm -hmm. we don't meet again if you need i'm just wondering about your time frame for action we're, we're, we're okay. okay on that all right at july 20. yeah that next that'll meeting? be all right i think yeah. that's okay okay if not we could probably motivate if you needed us well, i think well we get, with the humidity level we've got these days i don't think we need to rush <laughs> okay <laughs> and then the other thing just to that's humid out there i think there's one other so the LVRT, you mentioned we've got the, we're working with the USDA grant to go out to bid for um, heading towards from over here on Slap Hill up towards East Hardwick. Yep. You mentioned the Creamery Road project, which yep. has the rail thing, but we also have the bridge. So separately, we also have the two bridges heading towards East Hardwick are getting that that's design. also out to bid for to design. design right now right it's a little confusing but yeah <laughs> anyway there's a lot positive going progress. on positive progress and, and i just sean, moving sean worked really <clears throat> diligently to get us that um usda money john had started before he left to put in the application and it's quite we were encouraged by them and it's quite a lot of money and due to Due to the other efforts we'd had to get, do fundraising and get donations, we're going to be able to leverage a lot of money from USDA um, using the money that we already had kind of set up as match. It's not finalized yeah. yet, but we're getting close. Right. So anyway. And then the, the section from North Main back to the Yellow Burn, we that's would anticipate right. construction on that next year. That's in design now. That's going out, right. That's that's V-Translit. And that's V-Translit and that, I think year. actually design has been selected as VHB and they're going to start working on design on that soon. Yeah. So we have quite a lot of progress. You said V-Trans is leading that? Well, well fast, so when I leading is a little strong. Fast. Leading is right. Leading is maybe strong oh, okay. term, <laughs> okay. but they're overseeing. Um, yeah, we're we're playing by their rules and we're using their money on that. Their right. okay. uh, the bike pedestrian money for okay. V-Trans, and it's okay. coming through vast. And but we still have to be pretty involved, and we still need to raise some money for construction for that for next year. How much? We are probably right now. I think we're short. Depending on how much is left um, after the Creamery Road project, I, we're probably short about 50000 for the match on that. But everything else that we've talked about, we have either the town has set aside match, we've had donations, or in the case of USDA, they're looking at our other efforts as match. So we, I think it's really strong progress. Yeah. 
That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Nick, oh, can I give the road foreman report? Yeah, and then I'll see if I want to add anything. Okay. So since Tom's not here, yeah, well, you got to explain why. I mean, we've had a two okay. rainstorm for somebody not two, out of the area. And that's true. So it was pounding rain all afternoon. I was walking down here. I heard the beep, beep, beep backup signal of something. Finally got down, looked down Creamery Road. The town loader at six, nearly 6 p.m. is loading the town truck, and they're heading out with gravel. So I think that the town, the road foreman report is things were probably going pretty much to plan until this afternoon. And now they're working overtime to try to fill some holes and ruts and stuff. Yeah, I did talk to Tom just before the meeting started. So they're working on, uh, you know, filling anything that has been washed. And um, he's he's got a list. So the crew's you know, doing their best to get things uh, back to a, quote, normal condition. And uh, just one other thing. the uh, When I came into town uh, on 14, I... Uh, the Cooper Brook Bridge area, that was uh, impassable. So just, I guess what I would say on this is the old phrase, you know, uh, turn around, don't drown. If you see high water tonight, then take the pass and go around. That's really an important phrase. You don't know what you're into. Right. So. Any other additions yeah. to the? He had intended to do the report because last meeting you had talked about, you know, I want to just know where we're at on our projects oh, and planning and leaning project. forward. Yeah. And I don't have the detail because he was going to provide it tonight. But um, one thing I do want to report on is that for paving, uh, the contractor we're going with has some work in Greensboro. So we're gonna, they're going to line up the work when it's going with Greensboro. They will be doing our work. We anticipate that for the uh, mid to end part of July. Okay. And then... Um, uh, that, you know, I don't want to give any more than that. I mean, I got a couple things that Tom has bounced off me, but uh, I guess the main point I would make, Eric, is that he has that information and what we could do is make sure that the board it? is informed. Yeah, I don't know that he's it? necessarily got it in a written format, but I can double check on that. But it could be written. Yep, it could yeah. be. Yeah. It'd be great if, he, if we could get, you know, because it is a long gap till our next meeting. It'd be great to get that. Just, yep. you know, it doesn't have to be fancy, but. Yep. A list of there is one other thing that Tom mentioned on the call and I think it is pertinent um, you know the, the crew has been working these past couple years to uh, upgrade the ditching and make sure the roads are crowned correctly you know with the new road standards and Tom's comment to me on the phone was I think we're holding our own because we have done these right construction practices in certain areas I wouldn't want anybody to take that to mean we haven't had any washouts because we have but his point was, I, I think this would be much worse if we hadn't been doing this type of work in the past, so for what it's worth. And we're going to be doing more of that. We have a item about that, even doing yes. more. That's, yeah, that's more, correct. More item number two. All right, any more additions to the road foreman report? Anybody else want to chime in? <laughs> well, we're all road foreman tonight. <laughs> we are. We'll jump in. All right, next is the police report. Aaron Cochran. Tell us what you guys have been up to. You okay. got, got two minutes, Chief. If you be on I might be able to make okay. it through. But, um, <laughs> as John said, the uh, highway department put up the sign, the sign post in East Hardwick for us. So uh, appreciate that work. Um, they they did that on Monday. We got the uh, radar signs up on Tuesday, um, so those are up in two locations in East Hardwick right now. Um, I have to meet whether I I told them I would meet with the um, East Hardwick contingent um, on uh, June 30th there they have a schedule uh, some type of meeting at the Grange I guess so um, so I'm, okay. I'll have data for them uh, to look at and um, um, talk with them on the, on the 30th um, let's see uh, as far as the local flooding yeah as Sean talked about and everybody talked about uh, m, &M uh, down by Eminem Market is across the road. Um, just above the Moose Warren Cafe on 15 uh, is across the road. Uh, the state highway was there um, this afternoon, so there was a lot of debris coming down across and to the point where traffic had to be stopped there. Um, so that's another point. Um, I do know, uh, as far as Greensboro, um, the, the road uh, beside Smith's store that goes up into Standard, um, that's going some of that is gone uh, uh -oh. there as well. So um, as soon as I get out of here, I'm probably headed out to check a few different spots as well. So um, the uh, Lamoille has me a little concerned as of right now. That's at its banks right now. Um, the, uh, it, the 
flood watch it goes into effect until or is in effect until 10 tonight it's sprinkling off and on to the point to when i came in here so um, we'll keep an eye on that as well um, the uh, the small brook that runs beside uh, house pizza that comes into the moil was extremely high as well um, so it's a volume issue absolutely nothing that can be done about it but uh, we'll watch it and we'll go from there um, as to what happens maybe so. we remove more ice in the spring yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so this you know it occasionally this happens i've one other time in the last eight or ten years i've seen you know a volume issue with this much rain and and uh, so but we'll watch it you know for safety reasons and and see what happens hopefully mm -hmm. we won't get much more rain it'll go down it'll be all good but um we, are, we will keep it keep an eye, <clears throat> eye on that um sure everybody knows um uh, out of respect, if we could just take a, a moment, uh, George Whitney uh, passed uh, recently, um, was a, uh, uh, did many things for the town over the years, uh, including was uh, police chief um, in town as well, uh, from I think 68 to 72. Um, so he was, he was also a police chief here as well as justice of the peace and, and so on. He was the uh, uh, long time treasurer for uh, the Vermont Police Association. Um, so he was very, you know, active even after he retired. He retired from the Department of Liquor Control uh, as an inspector there. So, um, you know, long law enforcement career and, and retirement. Um, so, uh, just like to recognize him, you know, for what he did. And the uh, the uh, uh, service arrangements are Saturday at Hazen. Um, uh, I think it was, if I remember right, it's 10. They're having a, a calling hours, visiting hours from 10 to noon, and then the service at noon on a private burial for the family uh, immediately following. So, um, and that's on uh, the, the Gros Air website. The full obituary is on the, the Gros Air website. So, um, uh, as far as our new hire, yes, John, Matt, uh, yeah, Sean and I met, it's been pretty crazy. Um, so Sean and I met with um, uh, what we felt was a, a potential candidate. Um, I had talked with uh, this individual before. Um, he's uh, a level two certified, which relates to what used to be a part-time certified. Um, and uh, was currently working uh, full-time at another agency. Um, he had been interested in our agency a couple times that we had openings, but we had full-time, you know, more qualified candidates at the, at the time um, uh, that we hired. Uh, so Sean and I talked with, with uh, Nicholas Steller, uh, is the individual that we chose, um, and uh, has an extensive background in the military, um, worked counterterrorism task force, um, actually has a dual citizenship, uh, both German and, and uh uh, U.S. Um, so quite an interesting, I, I thought quite an interesting individual and uh, very intelligent. Uh, really, I think will fit in quite well. So um, Sean and I uh, decided to go with with Nick um, for our, for one of our our new hires. Um, and of course, as we talked before, logistically he won't be into the he's, he will work full time for us, which he's allowed to do because the uh, uh, hour requirement that used to be on uh, part time. Uh, certifications is no longer there um, so he'll be working um, you know a full-time schedule until we can get him into the Academy which will probably be about a year from now It'll be about August of 2020 so um, the, the as you know the August class this this August class opened in February and was of course filled within a week um, so the next February class opens the first week of July um, and that will be filled the first week of July and in order to get everything done that needs to be done uh, to get them in that's not possible so it looks like it'll be the the August of 2020 class um, is when he would be slated to go to the Academy so um, so that's who we who we chose we do have an appointment uh, I don't know if they open it to any, if you have any questions um, I do have an appointment sheet uh, for your signatures <coughs> Do you, so at this we we need to um, make a motion to approve the I uh, or is it I don't remember the <laughs> to appoint the police officer. So um, we need a motion 
to do that and then we can have some discussion if there's any. I move we appoint Nicholas Stiller police officer. I'll second that. Good. Any questions for? No. I'm just curious, it's not pertaining to him, but you were saying saying that um, even though he's part-time certified, he can work full-time. So what's the difference between a full-time certified and part-time certified officer? The, a full-time certified officer goes through um, between 16 and 18 weeks at the police academy. It's a much more extensive uh, training, uh, both physically, well, a lot of it's physical. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's a paramilitary boot camp style. Um, basic training essentially is what it is. Um, the uh, part-time academy is primarily academic only um, and uh, training classes are spread out rather than having them within those 16 or 18 weeks they're spread out. Um, so uh, you have your basic part-time certification which I think now is two weeks of academic um, and then you have uh, various classes, so they break it up. So you have um, uh, a DUI school is another week um, that, that they go through, which he's already been through. Um, radar, all the different radars, or another day or two days, depending on how many radars. So you go through those different ones. So they essentially they have done uh, a fair amount of training but it's broke up throughout, but it's not recognized as a full-time training. So mm -hmm. um, so they, in order to get a level three training, they, they have to go do their time <laughs> okay. in the 16 to 18 weeks. So, so it's okay for them to be working for us yes. definitely as yep. part-time, it's just that they're not, they're not as knowledgeable. They're exactly, not as effective as the exactly, officer. yep. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of agencies, and this is actually how we, I worked for a year uh, when I first started in law enforcement here. Um, under a part-time certification. Um, at that point in time, we had to, uh, we actually had to get waivers because there was a 32 hour maximum requirement. So you couldn't work uh, patrol for more than 32 hours in a week um, without a waiver. Um, so to get at that point in time, there were six of us that needed to go through the police academy. And uh, so they, um, uh, had to apply to the training council for waivers for six months waivers to be allowed to work those 40 hours um, and uh, so that's what we did until we all got got through the full-time full-time police academy legislature removed the hour requirement so there's no longer that hour requirement they can they can still work um, you know any any amount of time so and so and so the officers able to do all the, all the same stuff as the other officers the the majority there are are some some um, investigations that they can't be the primary uh, investigating officer on um, we have three shifts you know three shifts per shift so he would work within one of those um, so if something came up there was a the majority of our investigations now that are you know large felony cases that they're not allowed to investigate are investigated by our detective now anyways um, so it's kind of our the way our makeup is so um, I definitely want him to go into the academy um, but until we can get in there um, and, and the current makeup of the way the academy is and, and how the difficult of getting in there uh, many of us or many departments are in that same that same boat so we're having to utilize that part time until we can wait our turn so to speak to, to get into that so right. okay so I'm okay. just curious about that any other questions my motion on the table is to appoint Nicholas Stiller as police officer in Hardwick. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have to sign. Thank you, Aaron. Yep. Um, and then just an update that I had, uh, uh, Scott Gagnon, who has uh, who took our uh, uh, dispatcher and admin assistant uh, mm -hmm. job, um, working out great, settled in wonderfully. So uh, he's doing a really, a really nice job. Um, so you have one more position to fill. Have one more, yep. and I'm working on that one. Good. So um, Lisa's mom came in. Uh, I have to thank her because she came in uh, to to meet Scott, uh, as well as uh, Amber. Uh, Lisa's daughter uh, came in and brought um, chocolate cake with peanut butter frosting for my birthday, um, and uh, so we all sat down and you know and chatted and and uh, so uh, you know she got to meet um, Scott and Amber did as well and so it was, it was a nice conversation to you know to have nice of her to you know to come up and 
especially to bring chocolate cake with yeah. peanut butter fudge frosting. Oh, you know, it was awesome. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, his um, that was obviously Lisa's specialty. So, thing, yeah. so it was uh, it was it was nice to have that and be able to sit down and talk. But, but yeah, so that's all I got. All right, thank you. I guess I got water issues to go check out. <laughs> uh, any questions for Aaron or generally? Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Um, next is Hardwick Electric Department report given by Mike Sullivan, or maybe not. Could be Roger instead. So, um, go ahead. What do you, give us the scoop. I'm Roger Prevo. Uh, I'm the newest commissioner uh, for Hardwick Electric. Um, it was about a year ago that you appointed me to take the, the vacant position. And so I think at the, at the roughly one year mark, Mike and the rest of the Board of Commissioners thought it was okay for me to come and give an update. <laughs> give Mike a break. <laughs> and uh, of course, it might be a trial by fire because we did have teed up from last select board meeting um, a, a question from Sherry Cornish. Now I know that has been addressed directly between our board chair, uh, Lynn DeBankin and, and Sherry, but I'll I'll address it with the full board here so that everyone knows how, we, how we've closed it out. And Sherry, you're invited to correct me if I have it wrong. I'm new enough that I might have something wrong on this. So um, as a reminder, in last, year, uh, last month's board report, uh, Sherry shared that she inquired about HEB putting a boot on the power line for safety purposes. And they, they, she was informed they charge $150 to do this. And Sherry, to your credit, you checked with um, other electric companies and no one else was charging. And uh, uh, Mike Sullivan, our general manager, researched it, Lynn researched it, and Sherry, um, it's a good example of, uh, you know, it pays when something doesn't seem to make sense to raise your hand. Didn't make sense at all. It was not the right prop, prop, the right policy for HED. So it has been changed as a policy, and I think with respect to you individually, you've been informed. Yeah. Um, so how did we get a policy that isn't right? Uh, it's been in force, uh, Mike thinks, for 12 years. 12 years ago, which I think everyone's aware is a different administration in terms of management and commissioners. But it was put in place then. There's a high volume of requests. And uh, whatever the rationale was, it started then, and it ended this week, last week. And, uh, and we thank you for raising it. Uh, is there anything I left out from that? I don't think so, but I, hopefully that will, um, that people won't not call and yes, have that absolutely. done because it's a it's a safety issue for people and yeah. it's possible that that was prohibitive. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's a good thing. Yep. And that's exactly why there cannot be a charge because right. if there's a safety issue, Hardwick Electric is responsible for addressing any safety issue that anyone identifies, and it can't be it can't be someone. You know, avoiding a solution to a safety problem just oh, it's okay. cost reasons. So, we're so again, that's were you able to find an actual policy decision made um, in your records? Uh, I do not know the answer to that. Uh, Mike Sullivan did enough research to believe it was 12 years ago, and I don't know if in that research he found a you know, proper documentation or just found that that's when the first charges were made. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't know the, I don't he, know. He also it. confirmed it because uh, Debbie had told me when I called back saying, really, are you sure? And she said that she thought it had something to do with the tariff. So he definitely confirmed that it had nothing to do with the yes. tariff. So it was just something that Got, yep. got put in place and yeah. wrong. and you know I just add you know I've enjoyed the one year of working with Hardwick Electric and you know we should have a benefit of having our own municipal electric department mm -hmm. and the benefit should be it should be approachable mm -hmm. you should be able to ask a question and get an answer it shouldn't feel like we all deal with other big organizations whether they be utilities or you know related to healthcare and getting an answer is a hard thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it shouldn't be here, and fortunately in this case, yeah. it wasn't. So I think you're right. That's the answer is. If it doesn't look right or sound like, might not be right. ask the question. Yeah. So I have five items, which would be more routine, just updates for you, and they build on top.
topics that were reviewed last time. Um, as you know, there are uh, three major projects going on that the crews are working on, and those major projects were two for Jasper Sellers and one for Novus, and those are going smoothly. The crews are getting them done. It's an it's a unusually heavy load for the crews, but they're going well, and it'll be good for all the ratepayers because it's, it's, these are significant projects. They'll help in terms of the energy consumption at a time when we have you know, solar coming in, having real usage going up is a big plus. So that's great, and the crews are doing a good job. You might have seen this week, if anyone was in Orleans or Barton, that the, the Hardwick Electric crews were there, and that was just a routine assisting other municipalities where there's cross support between municipalities. So uh, that was going on. Um, other updates, uh, the Hardwick Electric Department just signed a new collective bargaining agreement with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Um, that union represents the Hardwick Electric employees. That new contract runs from this month through the end of May 2023. So that's a significant event. Um, and it, the negotiations were constructive through and through. And, and, uh, and we've secured that. Next topic, uh, the, um, there is a, a large scale solar project uh, being contemplated on Center Road. It's a, the scale of it is 2.2 megawatts. Um, this is gonna be different because we've had in discussion other projects, I thought it would be worth describing how it's different. This is a VEPSA project. So VEPSA will implement the project and then VEPSA will take all of the power generated by the project and then we as a VEPSA member will get our prorated share. It'll be good for us uh, because it's a VEPSA project It's not, and it's not a net metering project, it will come into Hardwick Electric ratepayers uh, at a more attractive rate. So hopefully that will go through. It will frankly be good for uh, Hardwick Electric and the community because it will involve some upgrading to the infrastructure of a project of this scale. Um, so uh, we'll keep you updated on the progress there. Can I uh, ask, any uh, questions on that? Yeah. So, the, so can you, just to put it in context of scale, so 2.2 megawatts, how does that compare to the proposed H11 project down that HED is doing? I don't know the exact comparison, but uh, I believe it is larger. Larger. Oh, I believe it is, yeah. But I can, I can follow up, but I don't want to quote a number. I'm new enough yeah. to this that I'll, you know. But it, it, okay. I'll, but uh, roughly, yeah. roughly similar but this is magnitude. A, yes, this is a major, this is a major scale project. Okay. And, and again, uh, you know, no issues for us in terms of driving up our rates. This will, in theory, on the margins, it will have a favorable impact. Yeah. Smaller than it looks, people might drive by and say, major solar project here in Hardwick, this is great. Yeah. It's really only a fractional impact on us. Sure. Yeah. Directly. So, um, moving to the next topic, um, the H11 project. Um, that is moving along. One element of it is the purchase power agreement, just the contract um, between uh, the entity and, and Hardwick Electric. Those negotiations are lawyer to lawyer and making sure it's all developed properly. And because it will be enforced for a long period of time, it's really important for all of us that we get the details right. So those details are, are being worked through by the respective attorneys, the cross and T's, dotting I's. It is painful, but I think it's appropriate. And, uh, and as soon as that's done, that's the last step, step before the project can proceed. So is that? Can I ask questions? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so is the, am I correct in thinking that the structure is that a developer will essentially own the project right. and ATD will be buying power through a power right. purchase agreement right. on that? So the first contract was really the contract for them to be able to uh, lease the land, in effect, and okay. build, their, build their array on Hardwick Electric control the land. That was relatively straightforward. The power purchase is, has more detail. And I have two related questions. Mm -hmm. One is, um, uh, 
Mike had intimated at uh, previous meetings that um, the town of Hardwick could have some role in that project in, in, a, in a, you know, that somehow the town could benefit directly by, it was never quite clear exactly how, but um, that, you know, maybe the town could also, there could be, you know, another, some number of panels to offset power usage by the town generally. I, has, has there been any discussion? Of there that? has not been any okay. recent discussion of that, did any discussion that I've been part of. Okay within that. So that might be worth a follow-up with Mike. Yeah, I'm wondering if maybe we should try to explore that. I think uh, I've never been entirely clear on how that would really work, and I think we also may have a, an issue with the, um, what's the one out in Gary Dimmick's pit? Novus. Novus. The Novus one, I believe the town cited, signed a document to um, mm -hmm. take power from that project, and it may have been enough power to offset all the town's usage, essentially. So we may not be in a position. It's not within the current scope I'm aware of for inch 11. But we should, if, if the ink is not dry, we should probably check with Mike to see if there's an opportunity okay. there. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I just mentioned and that Yep. We'd like to have that conversation. That'd be great. great. And then the other, sorry, I'm full of stuff. I don't, <laughs> I don't mean to put you on the spot. Another thing relative to that particular project is I heard, so this may or may not be the case, that the, um, the, the transmission line from that H11 from the solar array was going to essentially follow the vast trail down to um, the Hardwick Lake dam area and kind of along there, through the woods. I don't know if that's the case. Over the river and through the woods. Over the river and through the woods. But if it is the case, and if it is also the case, I, the last time I asked for a power line extension, I was told that the new policy is they clear 25 feet either side of the power line to the ground, and that was for just a small line. So I'm envisioning at least a 50 foot swath through the forest. And we, um, Hardwick Trails has some trails through there. So if it were possible to work with the trails to mitigate impact, mm -hmm. that would be lovely. I understand yeah. that the overriding. Is your question twofold is your question both the routing and the width of the clearing? And, and if it's possible to work with the trails to mitigate impact, you know, understanding that the, that the you know, tra power transmission is probably paramount importance. But. If there, are, if there are ways to mitigate the impact that aren't harmful to the project, that would be great. Great. I, think I understand. Sorry, you understand. Okay. No, that's great. I understand your question. I'll, I'll follow up with Mike on both questions. Thank you. Uh, the next topic, um, the Hardwick Electric uh, Department Business Office, which has had some deferred maintenance for a period of time, will be addressing that maintenance. Um, and basically what you'll, you'll see happening is um, some improvements to the entryways and to the exterior of the building and some siding. So where it's, it's been in a worn condition, it'll get a facelift. And that will be next month. So we expect to see that. And that's my full update, unless you have any questions. I think I gave you enough questions already. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for uh, serving on the Great. board. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Anyway, everybody good? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, next is item number one is assignment of the DR. Oh, uh, we need to um, appoint someone to the DRB and to the Planning Commission. We have uh, one one seat coming open on each of those boards and we have, um, in both cases, we have a uh, letter of interest from incumbents, from folks who are already off, off um, occupying those seats. Kristen Leahy has put forward uh, that request that we reappoint. Um, so uh, you want a motion to reappoint? I would love that. So I'll make the motion that we reappoint, as requested by those folks, um, Kate Brook to the DRB, um, continuation of the term that she's 
that she took over, and then Dave Gross to Planning Commission um, for, yeah. Both of them the for a three year. Three year extension on their current terms that have term limits ending now or something like that. Does that make second. sense? Let me have a second. Do we have any questions? Comments? No. I would just like to say thank, they you. Want to do it. thank you to <laughs> thank you to those folks, um, and we do. If we have other folks in the community who are interested in planning commission or the development review board, we do have uh, an opening on one and an upcoming opening on the other. So we do have two yeah. open seats, and our only, I mean, you need to have an interest and aptitude for that type of work, and. Uh, and you can always visit interest. a meeting. You could visit a meeting. Their meetings are posted, so you can always visit a meeting before you sign on. And um, we will be advertising that. I've coordinated with right. Kristen on that. So that will be advertised on the town's website as well as most likely in the Gazette for these additional openings in first part of July, I would anticipate, or shortly thereafter the 4th. And so. our, our only real constraint is that we're, as the, the select board decided a few years ago, to not have the same people on those two boards just because there's quite a lot of workload. So yeah. we're looking for two separate people to fill those. Yeah, the Planning Commission is working on the update of the town plan. Yeah. All right, so a motion on the table is to um, nominate Kate Brook and Dave Gross both for three-year terms for DRB and Planning Commission, respectively. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, and thank you to Kristen for that. Um, item two is municipal roads grants, um, grants and aid program and this is a letter of intent there's very uh, we were given electronically um, earlier the description but basically I think what this amounts to is that we as a so the state a couple years ago decided that they were going to regulate more how we work on our roads and we're going to have to apply for a permit every year to work on our roads and they were interested in um, categorizing roads that are of too steep pitch, uh, are hydraulically connected to waterways and all this, and we did hire a consultant, we had all that done, which puts us in a position to apply for funding through this program. Um, and so if we, I believe, my read of this, and Sean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, if we um, tonight move to uh, Joint uh, to do this program, we sign the letter of intent, um, then that puts us uh, in the line for funding. That's a correct statement. For these projects that we've already identified that are things that will improve our roads that we should probably do anyway and they'll help us get them done. And my understanding from reading it through again after chatting with Lucian is that it looks like um, the amount of funding depends on how many towns put in a letter of intent, intent. So they have a pot of money, and then you look at how many towns actually put in a letter of intent, and then for each town, how much money you get is going to depend on how many miles of hydraulically connected segments of roads that you report. So it's going to be like propor proportional to the amount of work you're trying to do. That's what it looked like. Oh, okay. So this is just preliminary. This is we want. Our yes, we then they'll tell us how much we correct, and then we'll go ahead and do it. Correct. And do it first. Okay. Uh, it's a very strong placeholder though on grant. So I mean, we are we do we, we want to make sure we get it processed. Here. Tom already has project in mind for this construction season. So right, I know he's mentioned a couple places he wants to yeah. put stone and ditches and absolutely they're all in that. Yep. And this is to satisfy uh, to Eric's points. You know, we have a municipal roads permit now, and it's a part of that roads. Permit permit process, we're obligated to do this work because of that permit. So we did this last year, right? We did. So this is yeah. doing it again. So just you can apply yearly, hopefully, and get some money. As long as it's there, let's <laughs> right. do it. <laughs> okay. And that's why we hired a consultant to I do this all this work and identify, because um, they're all, the segments are short, right? I can't remember how long they are, but they're, yeah, they're we short. have a lot of segments. Yeah. And so he went around and inventoried everything and with pitch and whether it was you know related to a waterway and all this stuff which puts us in a good position to apply for these grants and as long as the money's there we gotta chase it is my mm -hmm. feeling 
So we need a motion for that, or can we just? One thing we could do is we could have a motion to um, have the town manager sign. We could have a motion to have the town manager sign the agreement. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? That way, there's no delay if there's other paperwork that needs to be done. Right. Any other discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's everyone, so motion carries. Thank you. So, Sean, that's on you. Um, next is item three, Lamoille County Sheriff's Department um, Dispatch Services contract for police and fire. Um, so every year we do this, every year we get a letter from them. Um, one year in not too distant memory, we looked around to see if there were other options, and my memory is. There were no other options no. since, I mean, there used to be Charlene. You don't get to, yeah, the way that things work now, apparently, there just isn't, it's not like it's a, a competitive market. Right. And so how's the price? Uh, I saw the Relative to, to, to last, last year, last year, year. before, is yeah, it the cola, steady? The COLA increase, and we had, we had budgeted for that amount, so. Oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear it was a COLA there cost was a little increase. increase. Oh, yeah. There was a COLA increase, and we had budgeted for that amount. Oh, okay. So it's just a... Yeah, because he warned us that there would be a cost of living. Uh, the chief oh, has sorry. reviewed... It the chief... It was in the budget, right? I'm sorry. Um, chief Cochran and Tom Fadden, as the fire chief, uh, have reviewed the numbers, and uh, it does match up with what we had budgeted, so it was acceptable from their perspective. And it was what we anticipated. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, one thing I did correct was in the initial proposal, uh, it had listed um, dispatch service for police, fire, and then also ambulance service. And I just we had a uh, just a quick conversation about that meeting with the sheriff's department, and I just clarified. Now it's my understanding that the ambulance service it's its own entity, they so that should be separately. a separate mm -hmm. contract. So yeah. mm -hmm. it was just a it was a typo that was quickly yeah. addressed. So um, it's in order with what we had planned for and the numbers, and it is budgeted. And obviously, we need the service. Right. So. So a motion. We could get the ambulance mm -hmm. on the same amount of money that may help out the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I don't think yes, but I don't think that was in the bid. Okay. I think it was just a mess up. Okay. But it's also I think beneficial to have. I mean, if the ambulance is contracting on their own. It's good that we all contract through the same dispatch. I think it probably helps for your right. communication. Yeah. 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 Do you want to just look at see if the wording right on the motion? Uh, sure. And yeah, because I read There's it before, two copies. If we can have, assuming it's passed, if the select board can copy, um, uh, sign both, then we'll keep one and we'll just send the original back. It's for the uh, next fiscal year, is the date range. Uh, yeah, services from July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020. So it's coming right up. Yeah. So we um, a motion to enter into a um, dispatch service contract with Lamoille County Sheriff's Department uh, for the sum of $48,222.70. Um, so moved. Good. All right. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, next up is. The Bridgman, the Bridgman Hill Reservoir, where the, we were going to we need we need to replace the roof. Then the roof collapsed, so now we really need to replace the roof. And um, one more sign both. And I uh, didn't sign on both sides. And um, so we need to. Um, then we did a bond vote at town meeting that was uh, that passed for that project. And um, so this next thing we need to do is to actually um, formal, formally enter into an agreement with the uh, what's DWS drinking water groundwater, state, ground, drinking water groundwater protection division there it's we actually go. with uh, it's the department of environmental conservation facilities engineering division is the correct reference okay and this is just saying yes we want to have the uh, we want, to we want to have the loan with your department move. in the amount of 420000 for this project. And it's a regular step of this construction phase. 
and around the project. And the 420,000 is the full number. It's the same number we used in the bond vote. That's correct. It's, um, yeah. Uh, and I would point out, I think I already said this earlier, that uh, recognize we do have some reserves set aside on the project. Right. So, so we shouldn't actually borrow that much. We shouldn't have to is the key phrase. But we always, the way you do these processes is you go ahead and borrow for what you have bonded for. That's how it works. Right. Okay. Yeah, and we need to, oh, and the only, I mean, this is kind of a side thing, but um, that we still, Sean's still working with um, Aldrich and Elliot on just moving the project forward and really trying to get it to come in before winter because mm -hmm. it, right now it looks tight. Although it doesn't look it outside, but. <laughs> We're pushing them. Right. Yeah. So, they understand. Everybody yeah. understands the importance. And, yeah. and to that point, the facilities engineering division uh, is aware of the situation and they have been very supportive from their end working with a and &E, our engineers to make sure that there are any holdups if I could right. say it that way so everybody's cognizant of the situation doing our best to keep it going keep, keep it going, going. yeah all right and this is was this one of those um no interest or low interest or reverse interest or some yes yeah, it's it's, it's uh, the, the, the phrase they use these days is uh, additional subsidy. You just want to say it, it's grant. <laughs> right. They oh, actually okay. say additional subsidy, so it would be, uh, it's it's effectively a negative interest. Right, okay. So there's no other place we can go and get this. Right. Yeah, we do want to borrow from them. And even though we have reserve funds, we're borrowing because it's negative interest, so it makes, this was my memory of it, so yeah. I confirm yeah, because we don't have the full capital amount put aside. Right. And, and, okay, and, yeah, and we don't have the full amount, yeah. In the reserve fund. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so a motion to uh, to enter into this. Uh, I, I move that we approve the application for the Hardwick Bridgman Hill Reservoir. Step number three, W D W S R F. There we go. Well done. <laughs> I'll second it. Great. Any any more discussion? It's actually the Drinking Water State Revolving Fund is what that That's what DWSRF, uh, Drinking Water State Revolving Fund. Beautiful. And we've used that before in the community for Glenside and Church Street Project. Right. And it's been very good to us. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And you on this one, it looks like you ought to read where your name is printed mm -hmm. and sign there. Eric, related to this, I have um, I have to sign off as the manager, so I'll sign. You're going to sign, too? Yeah. Good. All in one go? It's the um, amendment to the owner um, agreement. Let me just see. Good. So you've got... Just one second, Eric, because okay. I'm wondering if I should just have you do a motion on this as well. Yep. Oh, it's right is on that it, one. Is it on that sheet? All on the same sheet. I think I probably should get a motion on this as well, Eric. Just play it straight. That's a different uh, sign off for the same thing, effectively. Oh, this is an amendment to the agreement with Aldrich and Elliot? That's correct. Sorry, I did not provide that in advance. Uh, Numbers are the same on the bottom line. But what's the difference? Hold on. It's an additional service is to be performed by the engineer, modifications to the payment to the engineer, and modifications of other terms. So the original agreement amount was 27100 This, oh, oh. This amendment amount is 34,500. Adjusted agreement amount is 61,600. But this is, isn't this that we kind of approve it in chunks steps. and steps? Yeah, so this is like the next yeah. step. I don't know that I necessarily need a motion. I'm sorry, I should have looked at this more detailed. Um, just steps. Uh, have we already approved? Um, Going ahead with the design services. Yeah. And yeah. then yeah. it's kind of a step check in basically. Right. Okay. So that we just pay we just yeah, it just extends yeah, just that we're gonna keep them. using them basically, right? I mean it's not like we change scope or anything. Right. 
it's construction administration and reg resident project representative. Well, it's partly because we're going now from, we're going to actually have the loan in place. So it's one of the legal documents that the engineering firm would ask of us as well. Okay, so that, right, so what they're adding, so before I think what we approved was they were doing the design work, basically. Now the addition of services is they're going to add on bidding and negotiation phase, which would be the next step. They're adding on in the construction phase, construction administration, and a resident, they're going to have a somebody here on the project, and then some post-construction, they're doing drawing, certification, and program review, coordination. Um, so basically it's the next. I wasn't here on that initial round, of course, but these would be normal, yeah. just a normal process for a project of this type. It's just saying, okay, we are now transitioning to this phase. This is what we anticipate. You know, on the front end of the project, they would have scaled this out. So, you know, you know these things were coming at you, I guess is so, what I would say. So just to be on the overly cautious side, let's yep. just have, uh, I think we should have a motion to uh, that, that Sean um, enter into an agreement with Aldrich and Elliott to continue services for, as necessary, for the Bridgman Hill so Reservoir. Moved. Second. So the, um, I guess I'm still a little unclear on it. So the, um, what's the dollar amount? We've already paid them a certain amount, and now yep. we're, now we're, we're contracting for another thirty-four thousand, roughly. So paid them twenty-seven for the, the design. Now it's thirty-four for the. I think it's enough for the construction phase. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Yep. But it all comes out of the same. It's the same project. It's coming out of the loan we just did. Okay, and so the total is. The but, total but, what we're projected to pay them is sixty-one thousand or something like that. For the, right, but for the so but our first step was only the pre construction documents, design stuff, which they've already done. They've come back, we've figured out which ones we want, and now we need to move to the bidding. So it's just like right. the next the bidding, the construction, et cetera. Okay. I don't know why we wouldn't have I don't know. Oh, because you, you don't know if you're going to go into construction phase, maybe? We were pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let's bear in mind, if uh, you, you have two things going on there, and that is we didn't know where we were at in regards to the funding package. And looking back when you first entered into this agreement, yeah. you know, the roof hadn't caved in, so obviously the cycles progressed. Oh, uh, right, yeah. right, right. So, so that's why this is coming. And, that, and maybe that was before the bond vote, too. Yeah. So it was we before my time. It was first round. Right. Before my before time. Time. So we would have only had a, so in case the bond vote had failed, then we, we wouldn't have had it to the first Operating good, in good faith. That's probably why. Yeah. Put the set aside instead. Okay. okay, so motion on the table is to um, direct Sean to, to uh, enter into agreement for further services with Aldrich and Elliott for, as outlined in the attached. <laughs> and we had a motion and we had a second. Do we have any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, okay. So great, thank you all. So next up, select board reports. Um, I can talk about that we met a couple times with the, um, the uh, composting committee. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, nice. A couple times. I have another meeting planned for next month. Okay. And um, and so we're just still trying to figure out what the law is and what's 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 available here and then what our options are, kind of. Right. And um, as you'd imagine, it gets a little complicated. Yeah. So, um, so we're still sorting things out. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I had a researcher today from Iowa who was looking for ancestors who lived in Hardwick before 1825. We had stuff that she was pleased to see, but she had gone up to the cemetery, Sanborn Cemetery, found her ancestors, and was really pleased with the way the cemeteries were kept. You know, and mentioned that, that they look good. And so I thought, this is why it's important to keep those cemeteries looking good, and thank you to the crew who does it. Yeah. Now, was that one of the cemeteries? It was a woman that came in last year and was actually cleaning Gravestones. Was it one of those cemeteries? Do you remember? Well, uh, she was at the Main Street. She was at Main Street, and this oh, woman was at Sanborn. Oh. Um, 
But Same she continues to work on that where? project. Is that Montgomery? Yeah. yeah. It is, okay. Mm -hmm. She continues to work on that project. Oh, okay. okay. She's also the secretary at the South Waste District, so oh, it's like Montgomery. a thing she does. Oh. She likes it. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, it doesn't, if you don't think about it, it doesn't seem like much, but, but she was coming through Hardwick. This was her only day here. Um, she, she had got, a good experience. She had a really good experience. Which is yes, good. Which is good. And it's nice to get positive feedback for folks and in their work. We were even able to find where her ancestors' farm was. And it was, you know, she went away with warm, fuzzy feelings about us. Good. Perfect. Ready? Maybe, maybe she wants to invest in a library. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so at the townhouse, yeah. Saturday the 22nd, this Saturday is the... Uh, library fundraiser, the pie auction promises to be a fun event. Led by Justin Lander. Yeah, and um, a talent show. Um, there's supposedly more than just pie being auctioned, but why mm. not just go for the pie being auctioned? That's what I say. <laughs> um, that I believe is at 7 p.m. on Saturday, and then on June 30th. Um, the Highlands View Chamber Ensemble uh, is doing a concert at 3 p.m. that's a movie theme song, movie theme oh, really? music. At when? Wait, what's date? June 30th. It hasn't made it onto the website yet, so. Um, it's, is that uh, next weekend? Not this one, but that? Yes. Okay. The 30th, yeah. Because this Saturday is the 22nd, next Sunday is the 30th. Sunday at 3. It's a good time to go listen to movie theme music yeah, at the townhouse. Yeah. Uh, and it's a new group that has formed. Oh. Um, hmm. There are s adults and there are also some kids playing cool. instruments. And I just remembered something. It's too late to catch it live, but it's probably available on the web, sort of archives sort of thing. But. Channel 3 apparently does a super senior segment on a regular basis Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this evening's segment was about two women from Hardwick who have been playing cribbage together for 50 years. Um, it's a lot of cribbage. It's a Oftentimes lot of cribbage. they show that uh, the next morning. So right. if people are up early tomorrow and want to watch this at uh, WCAX oh, News, they'll probably it's see it. on the it. website. It's and the they'll website. have it on their yeah. website, yeah. Great. Uh, okay, new business. I have one thing, which is sort of, I don't know if it's new business, old business, but I think I had discussed with Sean at some point and I, that um, one thing we could do, you jog my memory when you're talking about a uh, 25 mile an hour sign heading on, down the road. Mm -hmm. One thing we could do at the crazy intersection, the blinking light, is on those stop signs underneath, we could have a sign that says traffic from right does not stop or traffic from left does not stop, depending on which way you're coming from. That's a good idea. I thought, didn't you and I talk about this? I see, if you say so, we did. I'm pretty sure we did. So anyway, I'm just bringing it up publicly to say, what do you guys think? Isn't It seems like a reasonable, low cost thing that might help. Just Probably wouldn't hurt. Just give people a little more direction is not a bad thing. I guess the question I have is why has this not been done before? Because that's pretty typical when you see a weird intersection. Nobody thought of it, yeah. apparently. 45 years or? Well, maybe it's been there before. I don't know. Or maybe they, uh, maybe there used to, to be a horse watering trough in the middle of the intersection and it wasn't yeah. an issue. Well, it seems like the, I mean, there are a bunch of issues, but the big, one of the big issues to me seems like that people um, stop when they shouldn't stop. So, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't help that. The side coming up Volca Street where you wish people it, wouldn't stop. That's true, but <laughs> there are like, going sign. But, Wait, but baby steps. So yeah, let's get okay, the people okay, who are okay. supposed to stop, stop them. <laughs> okay. And then maybe we can work on some way to get the people who are supposed to go, going. Yeah. Like maybe they shouldn't have a flashing yellow light. The uh, reason it's green. flashing yellow is if we had a stop there in the winter time, we would have a traffic backup all the way to the fire department. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably because yeah. of the road conditions. That's why it's a blinking yellow coming in on 15. Yeah. But maybe Given that, the hill traffic, the right of way. But maybe the blinking yellow confuses people. Maybe we need like a blinking green. Right. Or maybe there shouldn't be any light facing that way. It should just yeah. be blinking reds the other. I don't know. But first, Sam. Rules of the road. 
<laughs> Blink and yellow is proceed. <laughs> I, well, okay. this being said, I've almost been hit there stop. five times right. myself in the last six weeks, so I get yeah, it. Yeah. And stop means stop, too. But people are still confused. They're like, stop? No, I'll wait for the other guy to stop. I'm going to go. <laughs> well, I think it's worth a try. Yeah. There's no, it can't hurt. No yeah. reason not to do it. Yeah. Now, you're thinking on the stop sign itself? That's yeah. where I've seen it in other parts of the world. Like there's a stop sign and underneath there's a sign that says traffic from right does not stop. You know, where it would is say four-way stop or three-way stop. Is there actually a stop sign there? Is it just, oh, you're talking about the, the underneath the light? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah there, there, there is a stop sign on both, down both lanes going where you, There are yes. signs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there are, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not just the light. There are stop signs, too. Yeah. I mean, okay, so it's not going to solve the issue, but... Maybe it would give direction to those people that are not from the area that are confused. It might help. I only and it probably wouldn't hurt. It can't hurt. And it probably wouldn't be very expensive. But let me know if I'm wrong on that. <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be a good, right, so you could always the try. What, the wording and then... I bet it's pretty standard. Yeah, okay. Big flashy arrow says, don't stop, don't stop. Right, right. All right, that's what I got for new business, old business. Anybody else? I, guess, have... I wonder if you could have sign under the yellow light. like Dangling like, from above? Yeah. Keep moving, don't stop? Yeah, it's like proceed <laughs> with caution. Proceed with caution. <laughs> In case you don't know what flashing yellow means, <laughs> yeah, it means proceed road. with caution. Yeah. yeah. People should know that. People yeah. they don't. Because I think I have seen, you have you do see signs on there that say like no turn on red mm -hmm. or something like that in places, uh, you know, up, uh, hanging from the road oh, themselves. Yeah, I've seen true. that in places. So I don't know if, if. Oh, you can put one up there that says. Proceed with caution. Don't stop. <laughs> some, some version. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, well, means that's a that's yes. Go slow. Let's work on the stopping people first, and then we can mull over the <laughs> going people. Okay. Okay. Any other steps? Yeah, baby two steps. Signs, two signs first. New business or old business? Going once. Nope. Adjourned. Woo! Short. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes, but not as short as it could have been. Could have yep, been six fifty-five right. according to the agenda. And I was going to try to get us there, but whatever. Here we are.